Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. As I started my own journey of spiritual discovery, I wanted to share with you what I believe are the qualities of the spiritual seeker. There are many, many known virtues and characteristics of a spiritual seeker. Things like faith, introspection, sincerity, authenticity, and even curiosity. I won't be discussing any of these because everybody knows them. Instead, some of the qualities I'm going to bring up are obvious to understand, but are harder to attain and practice. In addition, all spiritual seekers' qualities, they work in synergy, one with the other. You'll notice that when you start working on one quality, other qualities will emerge by themselves as they are all interconnected, one with the other. In the end of this video, I will give you some tips from my own journey, being a military veteran and a practicing breatharian teacher. Before I list the qualities I've chosen, let me just say that life does not change, but our vibration and therefore our perspective on the same challenges that ultimately changes when we change. As an example, before you could have reacted with road rage or impatience or self-hate or righteousness to certain situations in life. Those situations are objectively the same, but it is you that have changed and you no longer see them the same way. And so you don't react to them in the same way. The more you will choose to work on these values, the further you will be from the negative expression of your ego. So the first value and clearly the most important in this day and age is humility. By that, I mean the recognition of your limitations and your openness to learn from others and from life itself. Increase in humility is a direct decrease of your ego's control. It makes you listen more, learn from your mistakes much quicker, as when the ego has no control, admitting mistakes becomes easier. Saying you're sorry becomes easier without feeling shameful. So with humility, you are ready to learn from others what you have yet to achieve yourself. The second value is commitment. I've said it before and I'll say it again. The seekers that reach the highest potential are the ones that take any practice and persist. The practice is not important. It can be yoga, mindfulness, meditation, non-judgment, but it is practiced almost every day. In the back of your mind, winter, summer, autumn, it's always there. This practice teaches commitment and discipline, which is needed in creating a character that you know you can actually trust. The third value that I've chosen is compassion. When you hear the word compassion or empathy, you immediately think about other people or animals. This energy of compassion first runs through you. You must develop self-empathy first, just like you must develop self-acceptance and self-love before you can move that energy onto others. That quality creates a sense of interconnectedness and encourage altruistic behavior and service to others. If you are drowning in your own sorrow, you're still blaming God's perfect plan as being somehow unperfect. It will take you time to see the bigger picture without the human drama that some people have attached to it. Number four, true objectivity. Your objectivity will allow you to view your own path and experiences without being clouded by your personal bias, by your personal desires or fears. Objectivity will help you gain a clear understanding of reality and make better decisions. And the last one, what I like to call non-opinion, or the way that I like to call it, non-opinion. Non-opinion comes from your awareness that your beliefs, your thoughts, and your emotions are all time-based experiences and are temporary. They do not define you. You have changed your belief system many times and you will continue to do so throughout your entire life. Holding on to your opinion is temporary. When you do hold on to an opinion, your ego will defend it by all means necessary. And that is its job. Your mind will then seek information to reinforce that belief and will deny any information that might resist that opinion or the new belief. And then you will choose to argue over your opinion or your belief with others, making it black or white, right or wrong. This is the way most of the world works today. 
People are unhappy, protecting their character, protecting their beliefs, arguing what is right and what is wrong, while missing out on the virtues of being in the present and without the monkey mind chatter. Some of these things open up once you start practicing a more unified way of living, a more harmonious way of living. And there is less and less mind chatter. There's more intuitive ideas. Uh, there's a, an experience of great synchronicities that come in life much easier. You think it and it comes. Let me share with you a simple challenge that will help you get there. For one week, and this is challenging, practice complete non-judgment. So non-judgment of yourself, non-judgment of others, non-judgment of your president, anything. Now, when you do catch yourself judging, don't make a big deal out of it. Just become aware of the judgment. And you're going to see that a lot of your thoughts are about things that describe God's perfect plan as being less than perfect. And that means that you're complaining about other people, about yourself. You're always comparing what you have right now with what you actually want. Just practice it for one week and see how much you become self-aware. Namaste, my friends. And as always, if you want to join one of my life-changing workshops in Sedona or in Spain, Check out my full schedule on raymaor.com.